Yep, another fantasy booking video, but here's the good news. If you follow me on Twitter, you've already heard what I'm about to say in this video. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's Pals Pass Phoenix, the YWC Valley Check. And once again, I'm here to talk to you about fantasy booking for WrestleMania. Specifically, the matches that don't mean anything on the surface. And in this case, there's two. Now, and when I say they don't mean anything, I don't mean that they don't mean anything. They're both probably going to be fantastic. But what I mean is there's no st uh, stipulation. It's not a main event, it's not a multi-person match, it's not for a title, it's not a number one contenders match. There's no other caveat on it other than this is what the match is. I call it the Randy Orton special. Randy Orton has had matches like this at WrestleMania constantly. The most two recent would be his match at WrestleMania with CM Punk and his match at WrestleMania with, uh, with Seth Rollins. And he's got one coming up at WrestleMania again this year against AJ Styles, but that's not what we're going to, we could talk about that in another video uh, for another time and why I think that match is going to be amazing. But on the surface, is this not the definition of Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns? And the reason I say that is because it could be absolutely nothing. It could be the further squashing of Drew McIntyre. It could be a simple, quick, welcome back Roman. We're happy that you're back. We're happy that you beat leukemia, etc. And that would be fine. That would be absolutely fine. I would have no problem with that. I mean, you guys know I've had a questionable opinion of Roman Reigns over the years. Don't hate the guy behind the character. Glad he's back from leukemia. And for once, wrestling fans have decided to not be dicks and welcome him back with open arms. At least until... At least until he ruins it. Or at least until WWE ruins it. But what if this match, what if Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns determines the path of both main WWE championships. Now, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre is, as I say, could be nothing, could be a very feel-good match, but there's a, there's a case for it not being, because WrestleMania, and I'm doing this right off the cuff, I don't even have anything on the clipboard this time around, guys, so this is as off-the-cuff as you're ever going to get an off-the-cuff video from me. We have three feel-good moments that we are pretty sure of going into WrestleMania. We're pretty sure we're going to have a moment for Becky. We're pretty sure we're going to have a moment for Seth Rollins. And we're pretty sure, as much as my feelings are mixed on it, that we're going to have a feel-good moment for the king of the mid-card, Kofi Kingston. Now, on the surface, all those are great. On the surface... Um, the Kofi Kingston thing will be a failed experiment that we can talk about at another time. Rollins beating Lesnar works for a number of reasons. People like Rollins. People want to get rid of Lesnar. Everybody wins. Becky is long overdue. Everybody will feel great. But you can't have an entire WrestleMania based around just feeling good. You can't get everything you want by design. You need to be a little pissed off at some things so that other things can happen. You need to be told, or you need to be reminded recently, that what you wanted wasn't what's best. And I'm not talking about that like as a McMahon apologist. Oh, just wait, WWE will do what you want eventually. Sometimes not getting what you want or not getting what the story thinks, uh, sorry, what the story makes you think you're going to get is good. Now, Roman Reigns, coming back from leukemia, which I'm going to tap dance around a little bit, do not want anybody, any of you watching, anybody listening to the sound of my voice to think that I am making any light of, of Roman Reigns and his leukemia. And I don't like the fact that they used it in promos. I don't like that they used it as a stimulus for a really, really bad Dean Ambrose turn, etc. But you've got it now. He's got the sympathy now. Strike while the iron's hot, etc. Make him as, as much as they want... <coughs> As much as they want to make him impervious, much as they want to make him the next John Cena, impervious, um, you know, invincible, etc. He's just come back from a fight with a legitimate injury, or not injury, a legitimate illness, as legitimate as you can get. Basically reinforcing in all of our heads that nobody is really impervious. I mean, even John Cena had his nose moved halfway around his face, didn't he? So, have this be the moment where he questions himself. Have this be the moment where we don't quite know 
if Roman Reigns is 100% the Roman Reigns he needs to be, to have him go in with all the bravado and all the bluster and everything that you think he would have, all the all the uh, pomp and circumstance that a John Cena WrestleMania main event would have. Have him go in with all that against Drew McIntyre, whose push, it's it's on the razor's edge, isn't it? Sometimes it's absolutely great, like when he kicked off Ambrose through the through the railing, etc. And sometimes it's, you know, him being lumped in with a bunch of goofballs like Lashley and Corbin, etc. And I think they were at one point called by the wrestling community Three Man Bland. Now, for somebody as impressive as Drew McIntyre, you don't want that. I mean, it, it, that's an understatement. You shouldn't be doing that to anybody. But somebody with the intensity of Drew McIntyre, one of the things when I was still watching TNA that TNA got right was absolutely unleashing Drew McIntyre. Now, that can, that can be the thing. That can be the thing we want to happen. That can be the guy we are behind. But if, if Roman was to win this match... It would have the same effect, in my opinion, and this is only my opinion because this is all coming out of my head. And by the way, my uh, my haircut looks really funny on camera, so don't mind me if I do this every now and then. Because you know. anyway, the uh, the John Cena match against Bray Wyatt when they were doing all the funky holograms and all the kid and whatever, and they were feeding into exactly what Bray Wyatt was. All it took was John Cena to laugh at it, and it became laughable. All it took was John Cena to beat him. And he's never quite been the same again. Look at uh, people like Rusev, etc. Now you could ha you could do that to Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania, and you really don't want to do that. So have Roman Reigns go in there, full of it, ready to go. I'm back. I sh I should be in the main event. I'm so pumped up and ready to go. Drew McIntyre sees the chink in the armor, one way or another, through scheming means if you want, kicks the head off of Roman Reigns. Drew McIntyre, from, from a WWE kayfabe point of view, gets the biggest win of his career thus far in the WWE, defeating their golden boy at his return, you know, return singles match, return pay-per-view singles match at WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre goes over Roman Reigns. Now, how does that affect both world titles? Now, simple. The other two, the other two answers are really simple. Um, people want Kofi Kingston to beat Daniel Bryan which is mind-boggling to me because any if anybody had said six months ago that Daniel Bryan should lose at WrestleMania, they would have gotten their nuts chopped off. But because the uh, the Kofi Kingston-ness of it all and the uh, SJW uh, leanings that go with that, all of a sudden, you know, fuck Daniel Bryan. And uh, it, it, this is not what this video is about, but I'm sort of going with the flow. It will be a feel-good moment. I like Kofi Kingston. If he does become the champion, I will be happy for him. Please do not mistake me for that. I just don't think it's the right move. I don't see him as a main eventer. That's my my personal opinion, and I've had to sp go to great lengths on social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc., to, to, to define the difference between thinking that Kofi Kingston sucks, which I don't, and thinking that Kofi Kingston is not a main eventer, which I do. Kofi Kingston is the king gatekeeper of the mid-card. He is the guy that anybody else in the mid-card that's about to go to that next step should be facing. Ziggler used to be in that role. Um, what, is, what is Dolph Ziggler doing these days? Um, if The Miz took a step down or two, he could be in that role. But right now, that, that role falls to somebody like a Kofi Kingston. And there's no, there's no disrespect to that. And I know people are going to troll in the comment section and tell me I'm racist and rah 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 because that's the narrative that the New Day is pushing right now, which I could do without. But anyways, for whatever reason, everybody thinks Kofi Kingston should all of a sudden be the WWE Champion. I don't get it, but I'll go with it. And if it happens for him, at the end of the day, he's a guy that's entertained me for a long time. I'll be happy for him, even though I don't agree with it. So, you have him go over Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan beats the ever-loving fuck out of him right after the match. Because it's a fluke win. It's a roll-up. It's a quick trouble in paradise out of nowhere. Um, and he wins the match. He wins the title. But Rowan and Daniel Bryan, and if you want debut Harper as another lackey for Daniel Bryan, you can do that. You can not do that. It doesn't really affect what I'm going to do with the storyline. But they kick the ever-loving shit out of him. They, uh, they leave him laying. He has his moment at WrestleMania, but he doesn't get to celebrate it. Key point. Now, you go on to Lesnar versus Rollins. Quite simple. 
Rollins goes over Lesnar, outsmarts him, curb stomps him, does whatever you want, maybe attacks him before the match. Whatever you need to do to get Rollins to the payday, he wins WrestleMania. Not the main event, but the main event for the guys, anyway, will be uh, will be Rollins taking out Lesnar. Lesnar's going to go fuck off and apparently face Daniel Cormier. Apparently Cormier is going to show up at WrestleMania. I don't know about UFC. You guys can tell me about that one down in the box below, but, you know, However you want to say, you, have, you want to say that Roman Reigns, even though he was defeated by Drew McIntyre, he's still in his buddy's corner for the main event, or you want to have DC come in and, and interfere, whatever the case may be, you get the belt off Lesnar, go to Raw, go to Raw, D Dean Ambrose comes out with Seth Rollins to announce that he is in fact retiring, which is a work, but let's pretend it's not, um... He leaves, and then we go on to have the Seth Rollins celebration of his title win at the end of the night. You have the Ambrose leaving announcement at the beginning, and then you have the celebration later on in the night. Ambrose, with the emotional toll of, of, of announcing that he's leaving WWE, he leaves the building. He doesn't want to be a downer on the celebration. However you want to write that out, Ambrose is out. Roman accompanies Seth Rollins to the ring, you know, puts him over, da 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 glowing, glowing recommendation to the crowd. This is your guy. This is the guy that's been holding down Raw while I was gone. Roddy, 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 like he's already done. And then you see Seth Rollins, and he celebrates. And he celebrates, and he says, I'm going to be the best person to ever hold this title. I'm going to be the best person to ever hold this title. I'm going to be the fightingest champion. Nothing is going to take this title from me. And that's where Roman twinges a little. Nothing is going to take this title away from me. Because what took the title away from Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns had to vacate that title after fighting so hard to get it because he lost he lost a temporary battle to leukemia. He had to submit that WWE Universal Championship that he just won to leukemia, not even to an opponent. So when Seth Rollins says that nothing is going to keep him from defending this title, that and the failure of his return and the frustration of his defeat at WrestleMania, they all come to a head and you get the, the glare, the snarl, the... Uh, Whatever you want to call it from Roman Reigns, he peels off the shield vest and tosses it away like it's something absolutely disgusting. He turns heel. He beats the ever-loving snot out of his brother with no backup because Ambrose is already out of the building and he won't be coming back because he's not part of WWE anymore. Roman Reigns turns heel. We don't hear from Drew McIntyre at all. SmackDown goes on. We don't have... We don't have Kofi Kingston on the show. We have the commentators, uh, Todd Phillips, or, or whatever the hell his name is. Uh, Corey Graves or somebody on commentary politely explaining to the audience that, hey, we were going to have a celebration for Kofi Kingston and his mon monstrous achievement at WrestleMania, etc. Unfortunately, due to the heinous beatdown of, of, of uh, Rowan and Harper and Brian, he, he's not able to be with us tonight. We hope to have a, an update for you soon, and we hope to have him back with us next week. Daniel Bryan comes out and talks about how he's still the real champion. He even brings out the burlap sack championship because it's still his championship. He starts carrying it around, not like a world title, but like the, the million dollar belt, like he can be the planet's champion, and that's what that will become, even though Kofi Kingston is the real world champion. He has a celebration, he mocks, and he calls Kofi Kingston out to face him, and, and whatever the case may be. Does the, does the heel thing of calling out the guy that you know isn't there. Next week on Raw, you have Rollins come back out, Roman's trying to explain why he did what he did. Hey, this guy mocked my leukemia, da 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 you know, fuck all you audience, you guys hated me until you wanted to make yourselves look good cheering for a guy with leukemia. This is a guy who stuck direct middle fingers at me by saying he would defend the title no matter what when he knew what I tried to go through. He had his petty squabbles with his brother, Dean Ambrose, over my leukemia, trying to make himself look good. You, you play up this whole entitled, hey, you know, these guys all backstab me, and he really, really leans on it. It makes... He, he cuts a really uncomfortable promo, gets the crap beat out of him by Seth Rollins. The announcement is made that at the next pay-per-view, which I think is Backlash, we're going to get a heel Roman Reigns versus a face uh, uh, face Seth Rollins at... Uh, I'm going to call it Backlash. I'm not sure what the next pay-per-view is, but whatever. we got heel Roman versus face Seth Rollins going forward. What do you have on SmackDown? You have Kofi Kingston coming down with the New Day. He's all bandaged up and whatever. He's got the proper WWE title belt. Or maybe they introduce a newer version that's not just a WWE logo. Maybe they take that opportunity to introduce a, a better looking belt. I'm not going to say that Kofi Kingston comes out with a pancake belt because that's retarded. Comes out there. 
He's out there with the New Day. He's throwing pancakes to everybody. He's got a title belt around his waist. His brothers are carrying him out. Da, 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 da. Out of nowhere, because two weeks after WrestleMania is the draft, comes Drew McIntyre down the ramp with the momentum of beating the company's golden boy at the biggest stage of them all, kicks the head off of Kofi Kingston in front of his brothers and gives them a couple as well. Daniel Bryan, loving this in the back, comes down to the ring, tries to buddy up to Drew McIntyre. He's like, ah, I knew somebody would come along that sees it my way, da 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 Boom, one, two, three, Claymores for Harper, Rowan, and Daniel Bryan as well. It's like, nah, you know, we're both better than that guy, but I'm also better than you. Signed for Backlash, you have Drew McIntyre become the WWE Champion on SmackDown and run shop after he defeats Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston in a triple threat match. Hardcore rules, whatever you want to say, beats the ever loving tar out of them, becomes the monster that he should have been on Raw. Talks about, you know, how the big machine of Raw held him down. They didn't they didn't want a monster like me really running wild. Takes, kicks the head off of Daniel Bryan, kicks the head off of Kofi Kingston. There's your champion, and Rollins is your champion on Raw after defeating a newly heel turned Roman Reigns. Where do you go from there? Sky's the limit. Anyways. That's all. As I said, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw a, a very, very abridged version of this um, up there. I did a big written thing talking about this. I thought I'd come up to here today and talk to you guys about it in a little bit more depth. And in the immortal words of Adam Cleary, WWE, you can have that one for free. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys. Like me